Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Rafe Gal. We're gonna do another grind video here for Final Fantasy VI. Uh, we're gonna try a bit of a grind on the dinosaur forest, which you saw a little bit of earlier. Uh, there's two types of enemies here. There's the Tyrannosaurs and the Brachiosaurs. Uh, it's one of the best XP sinks in the game. Um, I don't remember which what their best thing is going to be, but we'll go ahead and give it a shot here. I'm feeling a lot more confident than last time we were here. Um, this is one of the best XP sources in the game, as well as a decent magic source. It's not as good as the desert that we were in earlier. Um, that's probably actually the best grind spot in the game. Uh, especially because of stuff like this. Uh, this is really nasty. We actually really don't want that. Uh, I guess it's time to start cutting loose. First cast of Ultima this game. Uh, with Setzer there, we are actually really hoping for a... Uh, the weapon he's using has a chance at instant death. And we are very intentionally using this party because they need the levels, especially uh, Gogo and Amaro. Because we're not going to be using them while we're doing any Esper grinding. Also need to remember to actually, you know... Do my little checkboxes because we do still have the cursed shield going. Uh, we're getting close to 200 on that, so I'm hoping within the next video or two we'll be able to actually finish it. And I have a couple topics that were brought up by viewers that I'm going to talk about while we do this just to kind of keep babbling. Um, this is probably going to end up getting a little ranty at times, but I'm going to try not to go too overboard. <laughs> uh, namely because... involves some of the other Final Fantasy games, some of the later Final Fantasy games, and some of the m trends that uh, Square has been taking the last few years. I don't have anybody with re-raise yet. That worked. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to leave him on... That doesn't get rid of him. Yeah, good to know. Um, so yeah, the question was, how do you feel about re-releases of these games versus remakes versus extensions? 
which we've had a, a whole variety in recent years of Square releasing new versions of these games. Um, and I'm going to start off by just saying I wish Square would focus. If, if they're going to make these remakes, I wish they'd put some effort into them. The Final Fantasy VII remake is at least part of the reason that this got brought up. And I'm, at le I'm happy to see that they're at least putting effort into it in terms of... Uh, as far as that goes. <laughs> Like, it looks pretty. <laughs> it doesn't look like one of the quick, you know, half-assed remakes that they've been doing. That's gonna hurt. Sorry, I got a little distracted for some reason. Um, probably should have done two heroes. Or possibly dropped a Mega Elixir. That was supposed to be multi-target. I also should probably turn all of them around. Oh good. <laughs> At least tomorrow is on top of that. <sighs> so yeah. Um I'm been fairly outspoken in the past about the fact that I don't care for the modern it seems like Square has gone for a different uh, mission statement as it were uh, with their games it seems like a lot of their early games were very focused on um We're very focused on things like character design. We're very focused on um, bringing new mechanical things to the table, bringing new ideas to the table uh, to make the JRPG genre something new and bigger and telling amazing stories. And in recent years, it seems like they've got this kind of stale aesthetic. Um, they have kind of this a very similar character design from game to game. They have this very archetypal, um, you know, I've, I've said the, the emo boy, silent protagonist, moody protagonist, um, who may or may not actually be more connected to the story than their uh, female counterpart, who is, you know, actually the main character. I'm talking about, you know, Dagger, Ash. Um, ugh, I'm blanking on her name. <laughs> Yuna. Um... And this isn't for all of them. Actually, even in Final Fantasy XV, I mean, I, f I felt like the... I can't remember her name either. Uh, the female character who is around but not actually a part of your party is almost more important to the story or as important to the story as your protagonist most of the time. Like, the protagonist has the whole special blood thing going, but she's the one actually doing things. And I haven't finished the game, so I can't say for sure that that's the case, but from the related media, 
I think that that was definitely felt like the case. Um, I know that the team that made a lot of the early Final Fantasy games isn't at Square anymore. A, a, a good portion of that team left after, uh, or has left between Final Fantasy, um, let's see, it was after, they started leaving after 6 and have slowly been kind of filtering out, um, to the, the point at this point that the original, uh, developer is gone, uh, you know, the whole dream team that worked on Chrono Trigger basically doesn't work with them regularly anymore. Um, so yeah, it kind of feels like a lot of, with, in a lot of cases, they're writing the brand name, they're writing the hype of the brand name, and going for these really high-end graphics and this marketing instead of focusing on, you know, what I consider to be important in a in a game, especially in a Final Fantasy game. Basically just following the formula. Or diverging even further away in kind of, towards games that don't really feel like Final Fantasy to me. Uh, like the Kingdom Hearts style gameplay in uh, in 15 and what looks like it's going to be in 7. Uh, which we have not gotten a confirmation on the gameplay style of 7 that I'm aware of. Of the 7 remake. Um, but it looks like it has that same kind of gameplay as 15. Now, I don't have a problem with those types of games. It's just not what I think of when I think of Final Fantasy. So, when you're talking about re-releases and remakes, I feel like the people making them are often not the people... I mean, they're, they're people who I don't feel like understand the brand or they're going for basically just making money by re-releasing the old products and giving people what they think they want. And they're probably hitting a, a new market that is not me, and that's fine. I understand that not every game is for me, but I personally don't really care for a lot of what they're doing in the newer games. So, as far as re-releases go, we've gotten a lot of re-releases or slight remakes um, with stuff like, uh, I know Six and several other games have been re-released recently on Steam. Well, no, Six hasn't been released on Steam, but it's been released on mobile. And a lot of the other games have been released on uh, Steam recently, like Secret of Mana and uh, Chrono Trigger. And one of the big things with a lot of these recent ports is that they are mo basically just a port, but for some reason they felt the need to redo the graphics, like almost ground up into this new style. and. I guess, especially with Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger, I don't understand why you would feel the need to do pixel smoothing or, you know, remaking it into this different style when it's... I mean, Final Fantasy VI has some really nice looking graphics, and they're not modern, and that's really what I feel like the problem is, but... Yeah. I mean, if there's issues with the graphics, I understand that. If they are very off-putting to a modern audience, I could see that. Like, 
you know, taking original NES graphics and modernizing them to, like, Super Nintendo level makes sense to me. Taking a Super Nintendo game and, you know, cleaning up the color and stuff or something along those lines makes sense to me. But if that's the only way available to get some of those games, I find that really off-putting. <laughs> I would much rather have a copy of the original game with bug fixes, cleaned up, uh, or with, yeah, bug fixes, uh, quality of life upgrades, just minor things like that, uh, cleaned up translations, and then re-released without substantial changes. I'd rather just get a collector's edition, you know, Steam copy of Final Fantasy VI so that I can actually give them money instead of downloading copies of the games I already have. <laughs> um, remakes? Final Fantasy VII Remake? Sure. Final Fantasy VII uh, has really blocky, awkward graphics that don't feel good under modern constraints. 2D games? FF6 is, came out around the, the peak of 2D games. FF7 came out at the beginning of 3D games. There's a big difference there. And while there's some decent FMV floating around in FF7, overall, it feels very dated. I feel like I need to make sure we have uh, some heavy spellcaster in there. We'll stick with Celis. Um, feeling pretty good here. We may actually not be doing too much more of this grind. So yeah, um, I understand why they're doing an FF7 remake, and honestly I think it looks fairly impressive from what I've seen so far, but it makes me feel like it's a marketing ploy more than something that they're actually passionate about when I see them doing stuff like, well, basically most of the stuff they're doing with uh, the very little glimpses of the battle system we've seen. It just makes me feel like that's not what they're... Like, they're not trying to just make a new version of the game. Like, they're trying to do something different, extremely different with it and modernize it in a way that I don't feel like it needs. Um, so yeah, we'll see if that's the case or not. That's okay. Um, as far as what other re-releases and remakes they've done, 
Uh, I actually really appreciate a lot of their um, a lot of their remakes that they have done. Uh, you know, the the GBA games as a whole are very impressive. Uh, the big problem being there is a substantial lack uh, whoops, that was supposed to be multi-target. <laughs> that may be the title of this episode at this rate. That was supposed to be multi-target. Um, so yeah, I feel like the GBA games are probably among the best products like that that they've put out. Um, they fixed bugs, they cleaned up a few of the things with the graphics. In this game, they brightened the graphics just to make it pop a little bit more, basically increase the contrast. And honestly, I've noticed things during this playthrough that I didn't notice, you know, in the years I've been playing this game. simply because the graphics are brighter and I'm playing it on a bigger screen than, <laughs> you know, the, the GBA. Um, the remakes they did, for, or the remake they did for FF4 uh, for the DS that had a 3D remake, or a 3D redo of the graphics was actually really impressive. And uh, Final Fantasy 3 for DS also had a similar style. Uh, it had that, uh, the same kind of uh, style that they use for the Crystal Chronicles games, and uh, that they used for the Heroes of Light game for uh, DS as well, uh, which is this very kind of... it's almost uh, the same as what we've seen on like Bravely Default and uh, that style as well. Um, So yeah, uh, I feel like they actually have done a pretty good job with the with their mobile re-releases of the games. Um, outside of things like you know the music in this one, Most of them have additional content that they added with some final extra or some extra dungeons. Uh, Final Fantasy IV, both versions of it, gave you ways to uh, interact with the characters who left the party permanently, since there is a lot of that. <laughs> Final Fantasy III Remake was so much more playable than their, you know, <laughs> than the original Final Fantasy III for NES. I'm talking about the Japanese Final Fantasy III, not this. Just to be clear. Um... And I do feel like FF7 Remake could be good. I don't know if they need to remake most of the games that they're working on, or that they could, I suppose. But I think FF7's the best choice. I already talked about FF7's marketing, um, and all of that. And at the end of the day, it comes down to it, it is actually one of their best marketed games and one of their most loved games. It has one of the biggest fan bases. It makes sense to give a clean remade copy of it 
that appeals to a broader audience. And judging by the some of the other games that they have done with FF7 cameos, like Kingdom Hearts, appealing to that crowd with that style of gameplay could actually make a lot of sense. So yeah, um, I think that, uh, and then the other thing uh, that was brought up was extensions. Uh, stuff like uh, Final Fantasy IV The After Years. Uh, I have not personally played The After Years, but I have never heard anyone be extremely excited about it. So I think I will go with my gut and assume that it is not something that I would be interested in. And I don't think it's necessary most of the time. Most of these games have a very clean finish to them. Oops, I went too far. Um, you know, they have a good ending. <laughs> or they have an ending, at least. Uh... They're not always happy endings, but they're good endings. Like, I can't imagine them doing a sequel to Final Fantasy VI. It doesn't work, based on the way the game ends. I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I think they could do a side story... prequel that was set in the same world, but a thousand years ago, and do the original War of the Magi. I think that would be, like, a piece of the story that they've only touched on very briefly. Um... And I'm actually... Uh, one of the other questions that was put in there, uh, which I will now transition into, is... What would you do to improve Final Fantasy VI? And the answer is, I've actually, I, you know, I used to feel like outside of the bug fixes, that there wasn't much to improve. And that opinion has changed as I've done a bit more critical thinking about it. And honestly, this run through of it has brought a lot of things to my attention that I hadn't noticed or thought about explicitly. By the way, if you didn't notice here, we're going for the, uh, the Magi Tower again. Hopefully we'll do better this time. So, I'm going to start with the mechanical side of what I would change in Final Fantasy VI outside of the continued bug fixes. And this one's a pretty straightforward answer and I don't think it's going to be much of a surprise. Um, game balance between the characters and between uh, types of equipment to an extent. I think that there is a lot of good... in this game. <laughs> in terms of what's available, but magic is way too powerful. <laughs> uh, we've seen, just in this playthrough, Paracelis and Realm just wreck everything. Uh, the Blitz options are way too powerful. Sabin just wrecks most of this game.
uh, tools are very powerful in the early games, but they get extremely weak by the end. Um, primary physical characters like the Cyan are really weak, especially with the fact that his uh, special ability has so much timing. Uh, I've always found characters like Gao and Strago really obnoxious because of how much grinding you have to do to just get their side stuff taken care of. And there's a lot of middle ground. There's a lot of characters that are good, but not, but that can't keep up with the other characters that we mentioned. Um, and I think, you know, like Lock, Shadow, Setzer, and Mog are kind of all in that category where they're, they're good, but they struggle if you don't go way out of your way to make them useful. They have useful abilities sometimes, they have moments where they're useful, um, and they have things that you can abuse, like Shadow's throw ability, um, Mog's uh, Moogle Charm is honestly the main thing that he seems to bring to the table most of the time, which is too bad. Um, and... Umaro is very powerful, but you can't control him, so he actually has a huge drawback that I feel like really holds him back from being usable. I don't know for sure this is going to work, by the way, um, but we'll give it another shot. I think we're good. We beat him last time. It was just that he his final Ultima attack killed us. So I think getting some re-rays down will be what we need. Uh, the other thing that I noticed as I was playing through this time and doing a lot more critical thinking about it is that there's a lot of characters that don't have really strong story ties. Uh, there are four characters that I feel like you could cut out without losing anything from the story. Uh, that being Gao and Mog, in addition to the extra characters of Gogo and Umaro. We never get a motivation whatsoever for Gao and Mog to be part of the Returners. I mean, we know Mog's, you know, the other Moogles got killed off by the Empire, but we never actually hear that. We have to infer it, and he never says anything about it. He has no interaction with any of the other characters. He's an optional character. Uh, Gao just follows along. There's no reason for it. Um, the characters who we see with a strong motivation... I'm going to double-check real quick here to make sure... Yes. And I can't remember if Berserk is a... You know what? I think we're actually probably good. Let's just... Let's just bounce some spells. Oh, that's right, he has barrier chains. That's why we don't want to do that. <laughs> Let's see how much this does now. None. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, th there's four characters that have really clear motivations. We see Terra, Locke, Celis, and Cyan fairly consistently have a good reason for doing what they do. Um, however, Terra does very little in the world of see if we can find a weakness here. Uh, Terra does very little in the world of balance, or in the world of ruin, rather. She straight up becomes an optional character, and we hear almost nothing more about her connection with the Espers after that one scene. After, Especially after we get through the uh, world of... Oh, great. See if this works. So yeah, I, I had mentioned during my main character discussion that it feels like there's two separate kind of sections to the game. section about the espers and the section about kafka and we definitely get that gap uh where once the stuff about the espers is done we get very little from Terra, which is why there's a question as to whether she's a main character or not there wouldn't be that question if we didn't have that uh inherent issue in the game A lot of the other characters, we get a little bit from them, but it doesn't last. Um, let's see, we never see Celis as an Imperial, um, is one of the things I had noted here. I think that it's... I think that it's uh, something that would emphasize what she has done by giving it up if we saw her as a villain first, if we were introduced to Celis as a villain. Uh, almost kind of like how we get introduced to General Leo uh, as kind of this, we see him as an Imperial, but then we see him, we see him still coming back and being, and bringing something positive. Um, Locke is a great character. He brings a lot to the party. He brings a lot to, um, enhancing the stories of Hera and Celis, which is, who are arguably the main characters. He's the good supporting character for both of them. But his motivation is really kind of if you don't take him to Nikea in the or uh, pull again in the first in the world of balance, you don't get that part of his story. And the fact that he doesn't come back until much later in the world of ruin than most characters really hurts him as a character, similar to Terra. Um, I would have loved for him to come back in place of, you know, fairly, uh, make him available at least fairly early in the game and in World of Ruin because his relationship with Celis is one of the major parts of Celis's story and her coming to terms with things and it really just kind of gets brushed over. You could still have the Phoenix Cave and his resolution with Rachel come later as a side dungeon 
but him joining, I feel like, should be mandatory. And as it stands, he's really easy to miss. Um, on the other side of that, there are two characters that we get early in the world of Ruin that I don't feel are as flushed out. Edgar and Sabin don't have a strong motivation. We see one scene that provides them with kind of a strong motive, or that gives them a strong motivation for being part of the Returners, for fighting Kafka. But we don't get that in the main story. And we never see any effect of it. We see Edgar caring about his kingdom, but his personal motivation that, you know, the Empire was responsible for his dad's death and the relationship between the brothers in general is mostly brushed over. I'm gonna get rid of these stupid uh, black cowls because I keep accidentally equipping them and they're terrible. Um, Sabin especially, like we don't see him talking about his homeland or anything except in the one side scene. He barely talks about Figaro. And that's kind of his reason for being involved. And their major story piece, their major uh, dynamic piece of storytelling is background. And I think that's actually the biggest thing, is that there's no dynamicism for those two characters. There's very little growth and change in them at all. But despite that, they join really early in World of Ruin and then have no going or no ongoing side story. Even to have something like uh, the ancient castle, where they, you know, I mean, it's literally under Figaro Castle at one point, and we never hear anything more about it. There's no connection to them. Having something about how, you know, the ancient castle was the, you know, ancient ancestors of Figaro or something would be something. But they have no connection to the Espers. They have no connection to anything in the story except for the fact, except for that one little piece in their backstory where their dad got killed by the Empire. And set, uh, Kefka tried to set their castle on fire, which we never hear referenced again. <laughs> um. They're good characters, they have potential, but there's nothing more to it. Um, Shadow. Similarly, his background is completely hidden. We don't know specifically about his backstory until much later in the game. I wish there was a way to exit out of these... Um, if it was a random one like that that you can't get. <laughs> Which, just for the record, any of them that are like these items like that that they bring out, we can't get. I'm just gonna mash A. <laughs> um, so yeah, Shadow is actually one of the most interesting characters. He's probably the most dynamic. You know, we see him starting as a mercenary, and then he seems to have uh, come to terms with a reason to fight, and sacri almost sacrifices himself at the floating continent. And we learn about his backstory with Realm and with Strago, which is never fully flushed out and is only in background. Kind of 
kind of continuing on from that. Strago and Realm have a connect. Yeah, you know, I've talked about the two storylines. They have a connection with the Espers, in that they had that ancient War of the Magi connection, and the fact that they know a little bit about the lore tied with the Boring Triad and the the Espers. But they don't have a connection to the Imperials, really. And again, they barely get any characterization or motivation beyond their starting one. They could be far more dynamic characters and be given a lot more of a personal reason for being involved. But we don't ever really get it touched on. It barely gets addressed. Um, I know I just mentioned the ancient castle again, but having that be part of Strago's quest, having the ancient war of the Magi, when their descendants of the Magi be connected, and having them learn something about themselves would be much more interesting to me than Hidon's Rock, which we barely hear about as a background thing in the world of balance, as a one-liner from Gungo, who we only get that one line from. <laughs> and Setzer is kind of a creep. And while we get told, oh, it's bad, Empire is bad for business, that's all the reason we get from him. may take a while. <laughs> That's okay, though. Um, so one of the questions that got tossed out that I tied in with this was, would you see, or would you like to see FF6 remade in a style similar to Octopath Traveler? When I thought about it, I don't know, I have not played Octopath Traveler yet, so I'm drawing on the assumptions in the marketing here. But Based on all the stuff I just said about character ties and dynamic characters, I would love to see Final Fan if they did a Final Fantasy VI remake. I would love to see it switch point of views more often, similar to the way they do the the three scenario Saban scenario and uh, Lock scenario and Terra scenario after uh, after Elite River. I would love to see that difference. And uh, something like so we could end 3 or Octopath Traveler where, you know, you have these rotating pieces where it keeps touching on this, this different things um, would be a great way to establish stronger character backgrounds and ties so that when they come together, we understand that each of these characters has a reason to be there. Clearly. Everyone's been personally affected by the Empire, personally affected by Kefka, or has a personal connection to the Espers. It would grant more focus on the characters who we don't see as much. And we could see them in their element more. We could see Celis as a general. We could see Locke as a thief. You know, and a spy. Like in, uh... Like in Figaro. We could see... Somebody like Mog. Who we don't see. Having their, you know, to fight against the Empire again. In a similar style to defend Narsh. Before it gets overtaken by monsters. We could see Shadow going on a... We could go on a... Uh, assassination mission, mission with Shadow and have something happen and have him start questioning why he's doing what he does. You know, have him, you know, be asked to kill this, you know, returner and be told by the Empire that he has to kill this guy's family and have him see a little girl and think about Realm. Something like that. Like, that would be 
impactful and make those connections stronger. Having, you know, seeing Edgar and Sabin, a little bit more of Edgar and Sabin's background, starting off with their dad alive, and actually having the coin scene happen as part of like a, a background scenario for them in the game, instead of as a side, hidden side thing. Honestly, seeing a lot of the world of ruin, where, you know, maybe have uh, little things like before Celis wakes up, where you see each of the like several of the characters doing something and then when you switch over to Celis as the main character and start collecting that's how you get your hints about where they are there's so many things that they could do with this to make it more dynamic to make the characters more dynamic because they're good all the characters are good all the characters are interesting except Gao And I wish that you could see more of that in the game itself. Without these hidden backstory things, or these very late game side quests. And as a result of the parties being switchable and the early technology, there's not a lot of conversations that happen between the characters in the World of Ruin. You'll notice that most of the characters, when they interact in the World of Ruin, have barely explored dialogue. Uh, a lot of them, there's no name on the dialogue. It's a generic statement being made by whoever is in your party. And like, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Celis is the one who calls Edgar out as being Gerard instead of Sabin, his brother, his twin brother. <laughs> like, the fact that your... your twin brother doesn't... isn't the one being like, uh... We look the same. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe you shouldn't be pretending you're somebody else. You can't deny it when I'm looking at you, brother. <laughs> I don't know. It's still amazing for what it is. It still has a lot of great story elements. It still has a lot of great characters, and I don't want to diminish that. Especially compared to a lot of other games. But if they were going to remake this, if they were going to modernize it, that is the thing I would like to see more than anything else. Is more interaction between the characters. Like, like when they're walking out of Zozo and, you know, there's the little things like Cyan being like I don't trust you and Locke saying I'll defend you. Those little interactions throughout the game would be so much more impactful and changing dialogue depending on who's in your party. I finally reached something that I don't want to do on stream. <laughs> um, this video has been going for a while already, and I've reached a good stopping point on the topic I wanted to talk about. <sighs> We're actually at the levels we want, so ideally we'll actually be progressing next time. Have a little bit more of a grind to do just item wise um, but we're gonna be heading to the Colosseum again soon so basically what I've got left just as a while I'm mashing a anyway um, there's one minor story thing that I want to do uh, involving Cyan and, Mor and Miranda. 
We have one more item we need to get from the auction. Which maybe will actually come up. Yes. Perfect timing. <laughs> This is 500,000 gil. Uh, after this, so we're gonna do some more stuff at the auction house, or at the uh, um, Colosseum, rather, including getting Gilgamesh, the next uh, Esper. We are going to do Cyan's final piece of, or this final piece of Cyan's side quest. We're going to do Leviathan, who's one of the other espers. And at that point, the only thing we have left to do is to finish dealing with the Cursed Shield and to maybe grind out a few more spells from, uh, you know, a few more spells from those new espers that we got. So, one or two more videos and we're going to be ready for Kefka's Tower, and then probably a little bit more grinding before we head into the post game. I'm not sure how much of the post game I'm doing because, just because it is such a such a big uh, investment of time, but we'll see. So, we finished the Magic Master. We got the Excalipur. And I'm feeling pretty good. Which, by the way, Excalipur is a one power sword. <laughs> um... So yeah, hopefully you're still enjoying these videos. Um, if you are, please give me a like and subscribe. Check out the other content on my channel. If you have any comments, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, if you have any topics you'd like to bring, uh, have brought up, I do still have some questions left to answer, and I don't have a ton of grinding left, so I may not get to them in this time, but you can always ask. Put them in the comments. Um, I think that should do it. Without further ado, have a good one, and we'll catch you next time for some story progression.